that covers and showcases the best of Liberia and shows the world the truth about Liberia. We educate, elevate, and promote all things Liberia. We conduct interviews, panel discussions, debates, and more. Tune in to Focus on Liberia on Facebook and YouTube and be a part of the stories that make up the news. This is Focus on Liberia, and I am Dennis Jack. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another edition of Tough Talking Thursday on Focus on Liberia. My name is Dennis Jai, and we are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. In tonight's edition of Tough Talking Thursday, we're going to be talking tough on what should Liberians be looking for in selecting the next president? What? And what really is the reality? What are they looking at? Based on what they are looking at, if elections were held this week, who's, who is that going to favor? That's the show tonight. We're going to be talking tough. But before we get to that, there is breaking news here. We heard this morning, we woke up to get another breaking news, and we want to share that with you. Stanton Witherspoon, Afrin Salu, and Rene Benedict did knowingly and willfully and with the intent to defraud, devise, and intent to devise a scheme and artifice to defraud and for obtaining money and property by means of materially false and fraudulent pretenses, representations, and promises, knowing the pretenses, representations, and promises were false and fraudulent when made and for the purpose of executing the scheme and did knowingly transmit and cause to be transmitted by me of wire communication in interstate and foreign commerce, certain writing signs, signals, pictures, sounds in violation of Title 18, United States Code, Section 1343. That's what we woke up to this morning. There is an allegation against Mr. Stanton Witherspoon of Spoon TV, and it says, there is an indictment. It reads, the indictment charges defendant Stanton Witherspoon of Burlington County, New Jersey, Alfred Selu of Burlington County, New Jersey, and Rene Benedel of Westchester County, New York, with conspiring to commit and committing wire fraud. The indictment alleges that Witherspoon, Selu, and Benedel solicited and recruited individuals who sought nursing credentials to gain employment as an RN, or LP and VN. It is alleged that these defendants arranged with Senon, who managed Siena College and is charged by information with wire fraud conspiracy to create and distribute false and fraudulent diplomas and transcripts. These fake documents represented that the aspiring RN and LPN candidates had attended Siena College's nursing program in Broward County and completed the necessary courses and clinicals to obtain RN or LPN diplomas. In fact, the aspiring nurses never completed the necessary courses. That's the breaking news we woke up to this morning. And I know most of you heard the story. Now, tonight to discuss the topic and the breaking news, I have Mr. Admin Salif, who is our governance consultant. Mr. Salif, welcome to the show. Hey, Dennis, happy to be here. Let's do it. I also have Dr. Abdullahi Dukle, someone who worked very closely with President Salif and former interim president Amos Claudio Sawyer. Dr. Abdullahi, welcome to the show. Thank you and hello to everyone. I also have here Mr. Kalevo Gonglo. This is the guy he knows about election matters because he participated. He worked with numbers. Stat statisticians and mathematicians and you name it. So everything he see numbers in it. Mr. Gonglo, welcome to the show. My pleasure. Thank you, Dennis. Good. Last and definitely not the least is our global affairs analyst, Mr. Mansfield Duopu from Nimba County. He loves to pronounce the name the Gio way. Mr. Duopu, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dennis. It is a pleasure being here with you and the other uh, panelists. We want to welcome all our viewers from across the globe. Mr. Dropo, if you can just uh, move up a little bit. I, I know you. All right. All right. Good. We want to welcome our viewers from across the globe. Our topic today, what librarians should look for in selecting the next president. But we want to start with the breaking news of uh, Mr. Witherspoon. 
let me start with uh, Mr. Our Mr. Salif. Mr. Salif, what do you make of the story? It's bad news. It's uh, bad news all the way around. You know, I, I'm not. I I'm not one who is gleeful uh, in other people's misfortune or bad news uh, necessarily. Uh, and I see that Liberians, you know, we can be very vile when it comes to that. Um, people don't hold their horses. They uh, they celebrate and can be very gleeful. Uh, however, you know, before a grand jury returns an indictment, a substantial investigation uh, has gone into this. They've gathered evidence. Um, you know, the if you read, I like, I, you know, I kind of perused a little bit um, uh, in the in the in uh, the document. I can tell you these are serious charges. Uh, and, and you know, uh, rightly so, man, of course there are allegations because America <clears throat> is a country of rule of law, right? Um, uh, you are you are presumed innocent until you're proven guilty. Uh, do you grant a due process? You you know, Mr. Witherspoon, I understand he's the man of means and so he can hire the best uh, lawyers there are in America. Uh, but this is bad news on many front. Um, politically, it's bad news. Uh, legal is bad news for his family and just people who love him. Uh, for Liberia, it's bad news. And for the public, because, see, you have to understand, it, the, the, the allegations uh, surround a very important area, uh, nursing, medicine, public safety. There's a reason why the medical field, uh, the medical profession <laughs> is regulated, particularly nursing is regulated, so that people who practice nursing uh, or medicine generally are competent and qualified people who, who have gone through the necessary uh, training and education so that uh, you are confident when you go to hospital, you go to clinic, you're not second guessing anybody. Thank you. Let me go to you, Mr. Duopu. Uh, I know we still don't have enough information, but uh, most of us, we've seen the uh, indictment. We've seen uh, that uh, Mr. Witherspoon operated uh, some nursing institutions and they are selling fake, uh, they are selling diplomas instead of people going to complete the course at $15,000 a piece and they've sold up to 7,600 diplomas. So if you do your calculation, that is a little over 114 million black bucks. This is, uh, we first uh, heard about the indictment <coughs> of uh, Madame Ellen Cochran, another fellow librarian in um, PPE fraud, uh, fraud charges. Then came the one concerning the late Dr. Cassell. Now is uh, Mr. Witherspoon. What's going on here? The these, these are very, very, very uh, strong charges uh, from the federal government. Uh, and like Ahmed, you know, rightly stated, uh, I read an indictment. You know, I'm not a lawyer. I try to wrap my head around it, at least from my own layman understanding of the law and how these uh, investigations are done. You know, these are very, very you know, very intense investigation. It, they take time. They are very, you know, intrusive. Sometimes they capture your, 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 you know, all your data, your telephone conversation, because they talk about wire fraud, you know, and they talk about mail fraud. So these are federal offenses. <laughs> you know, I would just preface my comment on the, the larger, you know, issue with the the whole notion that uh, in the criminal law, in criminal justice system, there's always the presumption of innocence, you know, and uh, also the due process, where uh, an accused, you know, will will have his day in court. He will be read his Miranda rights. He'll be, you know, I mean, he he will, you know, hire the services of lawyers. You know, to fight the the, the, the the indictment. You know, that, that's what the whole legal system is based on. But I don't want this to, for us to feel like this is a Liberian thing, you know, to bring the whole thing on the country, Liberia. You know, when people go 
in their personal ventures. They don't care the country's name. They go at in, as individuals. And, you know, I know there are a lot of things that have been said on social media, how people have reacted to it. Can I have one of your nope, 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 nobody should find any consolation in somebody's, uh, you know, problem. You know, I, I, I don't take kindly to people just, you know, celebrating it. I don't care I, I, your feeling about uh, Mr. Witherspoon or, you know, Spoon TV or whatever. You know, this, these are serious charges they are facing. It's not just Mr. Witherspoon. This uh, uh, indictment, uh, the, the charges, it spans multiple states, jurisdictions. You know, I mean, you're talking about, I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, these are these are very, very, you know, bruising charges that they are facing. And so we just hope that, you know, the, the process will play out and we'll see, you know, where the chips fall. But I'm not going to make any, you know, judgment on the issue right now because I'm not privy to all what the grand jury that you know these charges were based on because when these investigations take place, prosecutors take these uh, evidence to a grand jury, you know, and and the 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 grand jury, you know, I mean, you know, just common folk who will look at the evidence and see if you know is worthy of a criminal charge, and they bring that indictment <laughs> sealing, and when they unsealing it, you know, they know that their case is strong and they can bring. You know, a, ver a, a guilty verdict because you can't bring a frivolous charge, and yeah. that, that that would be you know a prosecutorial misconduct if you do that. So let's see how it plays out, and uh, you know, and we'll go and, 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 and you know wish that you know I mean the law will take its course, you know. So that's that's the only thing I have to say about it. You know, in the meanwhile, yeah, thank you. Dr. Do I saw uh, Mr. Witherspoon briefly appear on his show Spoon Talk tonight and he said you couldn't go deep into the uh, issues which is uh, is legal but he said the information out there is already out there he's going to address it at the appropriate time but right now uh, even though he loves to talk but he's not going to talk about it because of the legal ramifications around those kind of issues well, let, let me first get your reaction to what has just happened you know i you know, when you, you sent me that link and I got it from somebody else. And then, you know, beside all the points that, you know, Sir Leaf raised, you know, I'm thinking about the guy who, who the woman who gets into an accident, the woman who is in a child labor, difficult labor at home, uh, somebody swallows something bad, or there's a fight somewhere. And you go, you are rushed to the hospital, and one of those people, one of those people, is one that is going to take care of you. That's you know that's my perspective on this. You know, it's all nice to say you know we can talk about and I read social media reaction. Oh, let's pray for the men, this and that. If he did this thing, there are seven thousand non-qualified nurses working in hospitals that people have to go to. They have no idea what they're doing. Do you know what that means? To me, that's a problem. You know, I don't, when the, you know, uh, Moses said it, I mean, Dopo, Dopo said it, uh, before the grand jury comes up with an indictment and seal it, both at the state and uh, federal level, is airtight. Either he gets out with lesser sanction or he buy his way out. The problem is this is morally wrong to even think about it. Mm -hmm. That you infuse into healthcare system people with no qualification because they pay you for a diploma. I don't care how he did it. I don't care if it's going to be right or not. But if it happened at all, it did happen because the FBI has no reason to lie on him. So I'm not going to be sentimental about this. I, you know, I hate to go to the hospital, and I don't go to the hospital. I go to the doctors. But I can imagine now, yes, I will run into somebody nice at the doctor and say, you're my nurse, yes, give me a shot of this. And then boom, she missed the nerves, and then I'm paralyzed for life. Or the baby dies. Or the father doesn't make out. 
These are not, this is not a joke. And, you know, be, beyond the moral question of doing that, beyond the criminality of the action, there's also something we need to think about. The mental health issue that we talk about in Liberia. Mental health is not just about being a Zogo or sleeping in the street. It's also about your mindset, what you think is as a model society, what kind of society you want to fit, fit in. You probably remember, many of you, you know, so at least all of us on this show remember when the Nigerian 419 came out, you were doing a biggest moment of instability in Nigeria. That's when Nigerians, you know, became known to be you know, big criminals. Are we facing the same thing? Because you, Dennis, you said it, we had three cases all linked to, you know, Liberians, big cases. Can we sit and think about our mental health issue and its many, many dimensions that we, in 40 years, in one generation, we had a coup d'etat, we had assassinations, we had wars, we had Ebola, we had COVID. We are a crazy country. Hmm. And how people escape that? They make up new personalities. They try to be rich. They try to show up. They try to become something they are not. So we have to think about it at, you know, at a different level, not just say, oh, he's guilty. He may not be guilty. No, the FBI and the state and the federal government do not indict you by hearsay. Mr. Gonglo, I know, uh, you know, when things like this come up, we always want to be very careful, look at it, you know, inside out to make sure we are not rushing to judgment. We are very careful to how we speak because what is really your understanding of what has happened? Because I try to say, okay, does he really have a school where students go to and there is a curriculum, they go and sit in class? Does he, or there is no school at all and he's just going and selling these diplomas? What's your understanding and what you make of this whole story? Well, um, I mean, first, let me join uh, Mansfield to say, you know, whenever somebody is engaged or accused of something, particularly outside Liberia, uh, even in Liberia, yes, the person is of Liberia, but it's not a country. We should not get to reflect that on the country. Because if you look at the, the statement from the the um the federal the federal charges um from the it's the florida uh state uh, the statement doesn't mention anything about the nationality of these uh accused people okay i think about 25 of them so i mean i don't want to go into that so let's just take liberia out and the second thing is um you know on a the American law, like many other countries, the person is presumed innocent, you know, until proven guilty. But me, a non-lawyer, I live here in the U.S. All that I'm looking, I know I've heard my colleagues talk about airtight. The, the federal government has also accused people of lost cases. People have also even claimed damages against the federal government, you know. So there are instances where um, agents, special agent rush to, to on earth something that maybe they didn't wait for it to mature. Um, but your your question about whether there is an actual school or what, I guess day and age, you don't have to have actual school. You can have online nursing school. It can be approved by the federal government or by the state. And, and, and you can have online school. You don't have to have a physical location. I can sit here in my basement here and run um, online school. In fact, this is where I used to sit in 2020 uh, to, to teach, I mean, three different classes uh, you know, at two different universities, just right on my desktop here, okay? So you don't have to be on campus. I think the question is whether Stanton has a legal institution register on the a particular state recognized by the federal government? That's one question. Right. And, and what I was asking, not that is uh, online or face-to-face, -face. I'm saying, is it a real school that has students that they are going by a curriculum, they are giving tests, 
they are going through the clinicals or it's just uh i will assume once i will assume that once he's you no know, he's supposed to be operating a school yes i, I will assume they're giving a test they're giving some thing that probably look like tests or that could be from the perspective of the the, the fbi special agent that oh it's a purported test it's not a test but from mm -hmm. the perspective of the administration they could say hey we're giving actual tests because I know one or two librarian students here from my state who have done online courses in nursing and go to Florida um, at the end of every month to actually have like uh, in person on campus right. and on, like on a weekend. Um, they spend the whole Saturday and part of Sunday and then return. They do that and they have a PM license and they're working. I don't know that school need. But people okay. run when it comes to school. I know a Nigerian that operate a school year that you know all the librarians go to and they have the license and they're working as RPN and RN. No, I mean, um, I mean, I think the truth will come when the actual trial mm -hmm. begins. Um, this is just a mere release for now, it doesn't uh, give much detail uh when they when they begin to produce evidence like they talk about wiretap mail mail fraud and what then the actual details will start to come whether they are is actually an air tech airtight or, or or evidence that um the defendant would just have no option but to go for settlement yeah. or plea plea bargain we don't know so let's see but you know my experience the little one I know about you know, a few librarians that I know. I know it's not something like this. I know a few librarians who have been involved in tax, filing tax and fraudulent filing and what have you. And I know one particular one who is my good friend. And the federal government, when I read, they were talking about millions of dollars. But when I went in the actual case, what he was accused of after his, his defense counsel took on the federal um, um, uh, prosecutor, they actually brought that money down substantially. It was less than $10,000. Thank you. He spent, what, seven months in jail. He was out. He's working. He's moving free. Got his houses. He got this. Everything moving. So, I mean, let's wait and see what, what's the true story will be at the end of the day. I mean, I'm not... Thank you. Thank you. To, to to sound like I'm defending anything. A crime is a crime, but you no. Know, um that's what I would say. So you you're actually saying wait and see, we don't know yet. Yeah. It's a it's a Oh, uh, you know, I was talking about the, the analogy, right? Because let's say if I'm booking a flight, I, I don't really care to know who the pilot is. I trust the system that whoever is in that cockpit is gonna take me his license. So with this kind of if, thing with this kind of uh, scheme, you know, assuming it's true that he did it. I mean, w talk to me about the danger, because it means if I'm getting into the, <laughs> this time now, that she will, because she would not trust the system anymore that, yes, this person who has this batch of giving care really is not, is coming to uh, maybe this, going through this kind of process. How scary is this situation? It's, it's a very scary thought. Uh, we go uh, in December. I think it was on the twenty second. You were not, you know, hosting FOL and uh, Brother Sharif. Uh, what's his first name again? And we're talking about fake degrees, right? Yeah, yeah, very, yeah. That very day, I think I was the only person he had on. We were discussing the danger of fake credentials and false titles. You know, although that was kind of limited to Liberia, but there's a there's a global issue. We've heard about people coming from India, Pakistan, other places coming to the U.S. who are not medical doctors, purporting to be medical doctors, working in the field. Some of them even engaged in serious medical operation. You know, I mean, come to think about that, that is a very scary thought. You know, especially when it comes to, you know, medical practice. You know, because there are a lot of malpractices you know, a lot of malpractice lit litigation that go on in America every day from just small things that people do to patients to big things that they do to patients, you know, inflicting bodily harm, 
you know, I mean, lifelong, you know, debilitating harm to them. You know, and that, just as Dag was, was saying, you know, it's, it's a very scary place, you know, to think that people would not even go to a class. You know, I, I know Caleb was talking about people he knew that, you know, went to classes, uh, you know, online and later on they go, you know, to Florida to have this in-person, you know, group meetings. Yeah, it happens, you know, especially people who do, you know, that degrees online, sometimes they go, you know, after, you know, a semester ends or whatever period, they meet in person, you know, they have the cohort meeting with the professors, with the other people who they see every day online, you know, to have that commonality of purpose that they're forging towards a, a, a degree. But in this case from the indictment, it, it was said that these people who were alleged to have gotten these degrees did not even go to a single class. You know, mm -hmm. that is the scary part that you, you even in Minnesota, I don't know if, you know, they have it in other states, to become a barber, to become a hairstylist, you must have had some training and some certification to authenticate that, yes, you know, the state has qualified you, you know, because it's a professional service. So think about people in the medical profession, because these nurses are the first line that doctors even rely on for information. You know, the doctors, they, they have the overarching, you know, knowledge about what they're going to do. But in the nursing, you know, department, these people give the doctors the, the, the nuances of this of the of, of a patient, you know, how the patient is responding, how the patient, you know, I mean, your, 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 your whole medical, you know, file starts from that level of intervention yeah. before it comes to the doctor. So to, to have these people who have not gone to any class to attain a certificate, go to, you know, medical facilities, get jobs in those fields. Some of them, I was told, and when I read the indictment, they passed their state boards. Can you imagine that? I mean, some people are just smart. Yeah, you know, some people are just smart. They can just see maybe a multiple choice. You go through the process and you come over flying color, you pass. And you, 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 you. Once you, you, you pass that state board, yeah, you, you can go to any facility and work. You know, I was just talking to my, my sister today who works in the medical field. And she was just telling me, you know, we're just talking about the same thing. And she told me that she has a co-worker, you know, who goes on the job and knows nothing, practically nothing. You know, she sees the woman, the, 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 the ineptitude in how she handles her, her patient, how she handles even the files. She knows that that woman doesn't know, doesn't have, you know, she can say it though, she can confront her. But in her, her, that's just her inkling that the person doesn't, have not even probably, probably gone to a medical, uh, or some training, you know? So that, that's the reality that, 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 that is being faced by, you know, not just the US, but all over the world. We hear about these fake credentials, people, you know, purporting to be what they are not and all that. So yeah, it's a global it, scourge, it, really. It's a global yeah. scourge. And if I can just pick on what uh, where, where Mercy is. No, I just want to show you the rating of the school, right? Yeah. The yeah. National Education Resource Center. 2.4. Yeah, 2.4. So, I mean, yeah, please continue. I, I want to ask you. Uh, speak on what Mercy was saying. Like, I, I, I have... I have People that I know who work in the medical field here, and and when this story came out, we we're just discussing last night, um, a month or so, and one of the guys said, "Look, sometimes it's difficult to say. You work at a hospital, um, you you see other, you see some of your your, your doctor colleague, you know, maybe one person would be a mom, and all the doctors would be whispering about that person, judgment, you know, that." We're not too sure what kind of medical school you got it from. You know, they, they will have that suspicion, but because the person has license, yeah. you know, they can do nothing about it. I mean, so, um, and of course, doctors work in, in a team. They will always work as team, you know, when they're doing a run, you know, it's, that's the approach to medicine now. So, so they come in the morning as a group and, and they, they consult each other, you know, Except where you go into family practice and you're sitting there alone. 
So um, some of these people go into family practice where they just re re write prescription lab and you know send people um elsewhere. Sometimes they don't even know how to make uh which medicine to prescribe. You know, That's so that there, there, there are issues like that. You know, but it's, it's always easy to, to flag to know it because the nurses and their colleagues will know. So the person knowledge is limited. You know, Mr. Salim, let me come to you on this one. They say forfeiture. I know, you know, you 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 got a little bit of law 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 in you there. They say the allegation contains in this indictment are hereby realleged and by this reference fully incorporated uh, herein for the purpose of alleging forfeiture to the United States of certain property in which any of the defendants, Stanton Witherspoon, Alfred Sello, and Renee has been as has an interest upon conviction of a violation or conspiracy to commit a violation has alleged in this indictment the defendant shall forfeit to the united states any property real or personal which constitute or is derived from proceeds traceable to such offense mm -hmm. or pursuant to title 18 and the procedure set forth in this indictment well, this is, uh, we also learned that uh, the uh, the crime, if convicted, is up to 20 years in plus forfeiture. How far do you think this can go with this forfeiture issue? I mean, this was, uh, this this is tough. Yeah, um, forfeiture, it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a recovery effort uh, because the public health sector, uh, money that goes into the public health sector, uh, taxpayer dollars, it's federal system, the federal government subsidizes the healthcare sector a lot. Uh, and so this is considered theft uh, uh, from the government and the public. And, and so whatever proceeds uh, out of this alleged uh, criminality or uh, the government is trying to recover recoup as much as it can to be able to um you know because for that that those who um uh abscond with resources they take them to foreign countries and, and i'm even hearing that mr weather spawn spawn has substantial investment in liberia uh, and so on so so then that becomes a realm of international cooperation, international right. law. You, you think that can extend to Liberia, that forfeiture? Yes, yeah, it's very possible. We have the U.S. Embassy in Liberia. We have extradition uh, a re, uh, arrangement, although this is not an extradition uh, situation. However, uh, you can uh, imagine two governments that have bilateral cooperation, uh, embassies in, at, in each, at each other's capitals, uh, they can they can you know look into some of that look there are uh u.s foreign missions abroad uh who hire local staff and local staff engage in uh fraudulent activities uh of taxpayer dollars they forfeit the the, the federal government seizes any proceed any property real or otherwise that the person may have acquired as a result of of that crime and so that's why you're hearing it you have a uh, different kinds of penalties. You have uh, the, 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 the possibility of imprisonment, uh, and then they also go after uh, the assets. They go after like like this layout in the indictment there, so as the the government can recoup some of what they has lost already. You know, but like everybody has said, this is really beyond material loss. Just the risk to the public, uh, and 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 the risk and and you know the impact on people that they've, they've touched these are you can imagine these individuals some 7600 7600 uh nurses or people who got these questionable degrees right who have families who are you know have communities people that are depending on them who have supposedly patients so uh, this has a cascading effect really it just is beyond just one individual here so, but Dennis, if I may ask, uh, no, uh, no, uh, hold, I mean, on, hold on, I want to go to Duke. I want to go to Dr. Duke and then we'll, we'll, we'll come. You can stay at the Duke. <laughs> yeah, Dr. <laughs> Duke, uh, as we learned, this uh, Mr. Witherspoon started his school, I think, around 2015. 
and this uh, investigation started in 2018. <coughs> we are in 2023. I mean, it makes you to think of what's going on here. I mean, this is America. The first thing that uh, you would say is, uh, who's going to be brave to do this thing? I mean, this is kind well, of mind boggling. But what, what if someone asked me, what is he dependent on that he has operated this for a long time? And you, when you tell me that, uh, do we see that uh, his uh, others were, you know, co conspirator like with the board, whoever is licensing these things? W what's going on here? It, this really sounds like, how can this be in the great United States? Oh, uh, it can be as easy as you think of Al Capone who got away with all kinds of crimes in his country and then they nail him on tax evasion. Uh, you can think of Donald Trump who said, I got money, I got power, I got media, so I can do anything. But he was kicked out of the White House. People have, you know, uh, and also this, this thing about being in the US, coming from Liberia, you see things as, oh, wow, so much opportunity. I was at the embassy many years ago, and I remember a lot of the time we spent talking about like young Liberian prisoners who were caught in small things, armed robbery, this and that, drug dealing, everywhere. I mean, there are hundreds of them in prison. How it plays out, I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go into the nice city and say, well, he may be innocent. I don't think the FBI will go after somebody for five years and then come up with a bogus thing and say, oh, they have text messages between him and the other people talking about money being, you know, uh, sent or not paid. That's those are serious things. <clears throat> we can, you know, we can play our own librarian thing and say, oh, you know, let's pretend uh, he's maybe innocent. He's there was something there. There was something there. Hmm. And I look at a picture of the child that goes to the hospital and is met by that nurse. I look at a man who got into a car accident or a woman got into that car accident, driven to that hospital and meet that person. So the problem is there. How do you know? I don't know how to respond to that question really, except to say, I, you know, as many who all of you here who em embrace this country, I trust the FBI. They made mistakes, but I trust them especially when these cases like that. They don't just go up to a guy who had a small school somewhere in New Jersey and say, what is guys doing? How is guy so rich? Yeah. They don't do that. Dr. Du, let me, let me add to this one, uh, because this is, he has operated this so long, and we all know that uh, Mr. Witherspoon has dominated, I would say, the media landscape in Liberia. I heard he bought a lot of radio stations. Spoon Talk is you know very popular. And he has political, it seems that he has political interest. He's talked political talk. We're, we're, does his uh, political affiliation or his participation in politics have anything to do with this? That people who don't like what he does may be able to uh, tip off the FBI or do things that will get him in trouble. You know, I run this scenario in my, in my head today. I said, maybe somebody, a nurse at a hospital or a doctor, Somebody saw somebody and said, where did you get your degree from? You know, how, what school you went to? It's that simple. And the person calls, he say, you know what? We have a problem. It's that simple. It's, you know, it's not sometimes a big thing. It's not somebody coming from like, I don't think somebody will call. You don't need to call. 7,000 people working with fake degrees, somebody will make a mistake. Somebody will get caught and somebody will re be reported. That's simple as that. You can put 7,000 people in a medical system. I mean, it's so mind boggling. I had a headache, you know. First, when I read it, you sent me, the, I read it at my stomach, and then it went to my head. I said, what is wrong with us? You say, wh why they do it in America? Because we think America is an extension of Liberia. We think our police is like the American police, that you do something and then you know, you know the story of the guy who they stop on how he put $20 in his pocket and give it to the policeman and say, mommy, let me go. The man said, what are you doing? Say, oh, you're winning the $20? 
And we think that way. We say, oh, America is open, so you can do anything. Just make sure you deal with the right people. And you pay everyone on the process, but you pay everybody, someday, somewhere, they'll catch you. America always catch their criminals. I can bet you that if they caught Mr. Trump, they'll catch you. Mm. Mr. Gonglo, you, you think there's any politics in this? Because if you watch uh, from what I read when I was uh, putting the story, uh, kind of preparing for the show, <coughs> it's because Stanton with a spoon started by being, you know, very close to the government. He was a very good friend of uh, former minister McGill. And the it boys was station together, gas station. Right. And and it was it was good, right? And he started buying radio stations, even though other people couldn't even get uh license to operate or frequencies to operate in Liberia. He was good with the government. And then later on, he started being, you know, sometimes you see him, he's kind of talking things that will favor some politicians, and sometimes he's not. And so he, he might have, uh, do, do you think he kind of rubs some shoulders and this is getting into hot water or somebody is doing something to him? What do you make of the whole politics of no, it? No, no, Dennis, I, I wouldn't go there. I, I heard I heard that from somebody this morning when I was on my way to work. That's why I'm bringing it to you. I heard it too. I said to the person, this is utter nonsense. Don't even entertain it. Because look at it. This is an investigation that started... But so maybe maybe some of his political rivals yeah. tip on the, the, the FBI, maybe. The investigation started when we are just came to power. They've seen here we are came to power, 2018. So you can't say... Uh, Anyone in Liberia, I, I will go with Dr. Dougal on this, you know, that it is just possible that some hospital or because if this is true, I mean, let's assume that this, this allegation is true, right? Let's assume for the sake of argument that this is true. It's slammed down. So there might be a hospital sometime in this kind of you know, developed relationship Maybe maybe with some employer, they start sending their graduates to those places because that's the way you get people in color. Oh, if you go there once you graduate, you're gonna get a job, you know. So they may have that kind of relationship. And somebody who is well trained may say, Where are these people getting the degree from? I mean, you got a couple of them working for this company, and that might just be the point, the trigger point right there. And somebody might say, Look, something is not right. And look at the graduates there. A lot of them look like people like me, right? Who knows their nationality? Who knows where originally came from, right? So who knows? Maybe they are not even, you know, they could all be immigrant. And somebody said, no, there's something that's not right with this. You can't have this group of people making the same mistake, coming from the same school. Something is wrong. So, you know, that is what I will go with, as opposed to maybe uh he been critical of anyone in Liberia, you know. No, right. and, and this is what I learned looking at the photo, there are people who know actual people in this photo, right? And don't uh don't forget now there was an issue of being a photo in Liberia, but that's not what we're talking today. But people know actual people in this photo, and uh I was trying to kind of like Dr. Do wrap my brain around it and say what's going on here. So someone plays and I I, I asked a um a nursing practitioner, how do you get sent to the nursing, you know, for your board? What do you go through? And what is expected of you when you get there? He said, well, these are, first of all, you have to pass, you have to go to school, attend all the classes and pass every course that you're taking. Uh, before that, you even do your criminal background check. You go through this rigorous process of uh, going through, and then you get your... They call it the, uh, the kind of lab simulation where you practice with mannequin and you pass that before they even sent you to your clinical. And you go through these various rotations. Say you go on the uh, your pediatric ward, you work there for like a week or so, you go to the uh, maternity and all that, all that. So it's after that, the board, the school now is going to give you a letter to the board and say, yes, you are ready to take this. So with all this process, how can someone just fake it? You know, but that's that's uh, that's besides the point. So it's like people still wondering, 
as to what has happened and how does it impact uh, and even though Mr. Gonglo does not want us to link that to Liberia, but how can we not, right? No, but, but Dennis, I think the point is, look, just what you, you explained, the processes you talk about. My wife is a nurse, okay? I know what you're talking about because at least I live in a house and I know what she went through from stage one to the last stage to become you know, BSN, okay? So they go through a whole lot of rotation before they even get sent to take the England, you know? And that's that, that's what it is. So they were, they are conspirators. That's why you got 25 person, yeah. 25 person in this, you know? So yeah. the, uh, yeah. the, the question I was even gonna ask uh, Ahmed was, when he was talking on that was, um, they graduate from the school. So they are, if this is confirmed as a crime, like with conviction, they benefit from proceeds. How do you look at? Are they benefiting from proceeds of crime, or are they participating in the crime, or are they victims of the crime? I mean, where do they fall? Because in the what? case of Tron, Tron school students were the one who filed the complaint to recover that money that the school mm -hmm. promised in certainty it was not delivered, and they, they filed lawsuit against Tron University. No, well, Trump's uh, school situation is, is different. Yeah, the school offered and like, like some other sham online schools as well. Uh, because the criminal law is about two things: it's about intent and action. Uh, you have to have the intent. Uh, so let's say the students, uh, the you know those who benefited knew that this was in a real school, and that they chose that was the route they wanted to go through. So that you know they could get uh, basically uh, to, cut, to, to cut corners, and therefore, then in that case, they're they're participants in the in the crime. All right. Uh, on the other hand, you know, if you want to talk about whether they're victims or not, I don't know if I, if I know something that Kalubu is doing and I want to participate in, so I can benefit. I'm not a victim in that in that in that sense. Uh, whatever, the, but the federal government is not going to go after income uh, from those people. They will revoke all the license that they shouldn't have had in the first place mm -hmm. because uh, anything that uh, is, was illegal in the beginning was not even done. So it's, it's illegal all the way, right? And so they will just not be nurses anymore and they will seek them out, each and every one of them. Their hospitals, their um, places of work will investigate their past history to see if any malpractice happened, any mistakes happened on their hands. They could be, this could be a complicated uh, scenario here. It could be that some of the patients may even come back to sue those facilities that hired these nurses and they didn't do thorough due diligence, thorough background check on them. So you have some cascading uh, a situation here on our hands. We're looking at the immediate impact, uh, you know, the individuals who have been named in the indictment. Uh, the, and so it's between they and the federal government, but you have state implications as well, because it's a state that regulates uh, nursing practices and medical practices in their respective states. And, and I'm wondering, because a, a lot of uh, these nursing schools and none that the fraud ones, uh, in Florida, I've seen a lot of people go to Florida to take their test. And they are not bad schools, right? I've seen people practicing. I'm, I'm wondering what would be the long-term implications on the profession if this has happened. I, I don't know if this has happened before. But what, what, what the long-term impact would be, especially for people going into nursing schools? No, I don't. I mean, the nursing... Yeah, I have people with my family, people around me who are nurses, who are doctors. Uh, their profession, their field is 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 one that is very thorough. Uh, they, you go to medical school, you graduate, you do residency, and uh, you know, and the residency is basically you are training. You are like an intern on the job. You're learning, and then from there you want to specialize. They have uh, a cadence of things, right? How. How you what kind of rotation, what kind of specializations you want to go into later on? It's very well regulated. Um, I don't know how this kind of thing would have happened in these states 
And that because it's multiple states, that's why it's a federal crime. And one thing I wanted to say also, Dennis, when we engage in things that we don't really stop to think about the implications, even this show we're having, uh, this falls under under uh, uh, USC 18. Really, the, that 1343 section they're talking about, and, and, and this is just United States code. So these are federal mm -hmm. criminal codes, federal criminal um, uh, laws that deal with different subject areas, right? When you talk to somebody on the phone, that is federal. When you text someone, uh, you you know have a Zoom call and that kind of thing, you may not even understand the implication, but if you conspired, and committed a crime in that conversation, on that video call, through that email. These are all uh, US, USC 18 realms of things. So these are uh, federal wire fraud, bill fraud. They, like you go to the post office, you mail something. Uh, 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 by you know doing that, if it is something intended or that is an illegal act that you engage in through the mail, these are federal, federal crimes. So it, it can have far reaching uh, implications than we're discussing here tonight. Hmm. Mr. Mr. Duopo, let's look at uh, where do you think uh, Mr. Witherspoon go from here? And I want to preface that with uh, what we see with uh, Madam Ellen Cochran and uh, the late Dr. Cassell. And then uh, when I was saying that someone mentioned the name of Kante, and I don't remember that, uh, that, uh, that very well. About, about another case involving one country. Okay, I think maybe the, the guy from Canada. So Kante is the guy with the passports. Okay, yeah, all right. So using those, looking at those cases, where you see this going next? And where you well, see the I, future of Mr. Witherspoon? <laughs> well, I think he has a lawyer up, you know? I mean, that's the, that's the recourse that he has, to so lawyer up to make sure he has Good legal representation, uh, good advocate for him. You know these these federal cases. The federal government has hundreds and thousands of lawyers. You know in different federal agencies, and these are uh, you know the interagency uh, uh, investigation. You talk about Department of Health and Human Services. You talk about the FBI. All these uh, office of uh, of 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 internal if, uh, review and all that. So, I mean, these are multi-agency uh, investigation. It, they cut across the federal government. So it's a behemoth. You know, the federal government is so large. You know, I know Kerebo talked about, you know, some people, you know, I mean, going to going against the federal government and sometimes they, they win their cases, but it's very slim because they always make sure that these cases are slammed down. They are, I tag like Dr. Duplet talked about the, uh, the the investigations are thorough because you're talking about investigations started since 2018, so you're talking about five years of investigation. So they've got to make sure they 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 they, they have the, the the evidence to adduce in court, and that evidence has to be the preponderance of the evidence has to be very weighty, you know, to make sure that they have a conviction. So. I don't know why he goes from here. I, I, I saw him today on his uh, Spoon TV, although he kind of recused himself and he let he allow one of the other guys to moderate. You know, he, I mean, he, um, he did the right thing for not saying anything about the case, you know, the actual case per se, and just, you know, saying that, oh, this thing has happened, you know, don't worry, you know, reassuring his, his friends on his, uh, his network his friends in, in Liberia and other places that, you know, he, he knows his family is doing well and all that, you know, things, it, it shouldn't be, the, the, the news is out there right now on social media. Today, I even heard a local news from Florida about the same very case, you know? So it's not just Florida-based. It's a, it's a national thing that goes from, you know, Florida to New Jersey, Delaware, in other states, and I was, I would just say, you know, in short, that the, the, the nursing profession is, 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 is there, are, there are a lot of, there are a lot of needs in nursing in the United States. For Minnesota, for Minnesota, for example, I was just reading uh, some document about Minnesota. The shortest, the shortest of nurses in Minnesota is almost like thirty-five thousand short nurses. 
So the state of Minnesota itself has, you know, developed these uh, crash courses for people, you know, I mean, enticing people from other sectors, other sector of the economy to come, come into nursing and incentivizing all those, you know, uh, you know, uh, response yeah. to the shortage, paying people money, giving them, you know, per diem and I think I'll move giving them. What's that? Nice. Let's, 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 let's look at a, let's yeah, look at stop. something common. You know, I uh, have uh, a nice screen, Minnesota. Few, few comments here. So uh, I would just. Abby Tala from our, is our health contributor here. See, I know the pain of going to nursing school. It's tempting to take the easy way out, but please don't run after anyone selling you a dream that seems too, too good to be true. And uh, another one here, Mephi Deco, say, you no, not this one. Maybe he had a yeah, he said Sheikh Basiru Kante, Daniel Kassel, non standard with us, all alleged, all have one thing in common they give freely. There's something about this thing about you know, in Liberia. And I, I want to bring this up, right? That and I'm not presuming that Mr. Witherspoon guilty, but if you can see these people, you know, they give out money as if that they are giving out color, right. What is it about our system that is encouraging this big giving, this flamboyant life? People are lavishing money that probably they get through criminal means. Is it our Dennis, desire to promote these people that is pushing them? It's, it's, not, it's not unique to Liberia, though. It's not unique to Liberia. Most of the time when people get, you know, money fraudulently, I'm not alleging this matter because, you know, I'm not privy to everything. Most of, most of the time, people who get money uh, fraudulently, most of the time they are very uh, they are very benevolent, you know. Right, and, and what the pattern was going to now is because is even, even 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 you know the, the the Mexican cartels, they are very they are noted. Other criminal organizations, you know, around the world, they are very noted for benevolent acts, you know, to right. to give them, you know, I mean the, that good grace in the public eye, you know that. No, it's almost like the Houdini thing. You know, we're robbing the, the rich, you know, to, to help the poor, you know. It's so it, seeming it, it as... The robbing you know, phenomenon. Robbing who, Robin you know, Hood. I mean, seeming see me as this guy who actually, you know, I mean, I'm working on your behalf, but I'm just doing it, you know, I'm yeah, the facilitator. Mr. Dr. Drew, before you come in, this is what I'm coming to now. In Liberia, or what I've seen over the years now, or some years, especially this war years, is this... Uh, 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 I don't want to call them criminals, but people that we know are stealing. These are the people we glorify and celebrate, like in Liberia. People are, you know very well, an individual does not have the money to build roads, to build these houses, to build mausoleums for their dead mother. But they are building them, we are celebrating them, and we are after them to get the crumbs from them. And, and you yeah. are saying this is not a labyrinth thing. No, it's not unique to Liberia. And we can go back to Liberia and see all these, uh, you know, I mean, the criminality that, that exists in Liberia, people, you know, it, it just reflects it reflects the, the the society that we have. You know, unlike the United States, that can chase these people and prosecute them. In Liberia, they are glorified. You know, they they are Thank seen you. as, you know, these big shot that can just, you know, and people legitimize it, people justify it. You know, and you find out that somebody who does not engage in such criminality, that person will be scorned. You know, even by your own family. Say, look. Look at this, Mr. X, who and you are on the same level in government. He has all these wealth and, you know, all these buildings. And for you, you know, you won't play with the rules. You won't play by the rules and you don't have anything. Even your very family, you know, sometimes they are very scornful of your, your, your integrity. So it, it just is a reflection of the society, the decadence of the society. And, you know, we can, we, we can look at it from a, you know, comparative analysis standpoint, looking at Liberia and juxtaposing with other societies, I'm sure... Uh, Nigerians will say the same thing, Sierra Leoneans, you know, people from Guyana and other places. It, it's just a reflection of the decadence of, you know, uh, uh, of, of, the, of the global, of the, of the global, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, situation that we are faced with. That people want overnight celebrity, overnight wealth, like Dr. Duke talked about, you know, and people won't be seen, you know, as doing well, you know, people won't be seen as doing well in America, you know, you look at your peers. You say I'm doing better than you know my peers, and you know you are you are put on a pedestal, you know, and and, and Stanton, you know, he has businesses here in Liberia. You know, he goes there, he sees the president, 
He sees the, 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 the inner cycle conveyor belt, you know, personnel of the president's office. He goes and 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 uh, and, and 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 you know tour the mansion, and all these you know the accolades are given, you know, and it, it's just the situation where uh, you know I mean these things are seen from that you know yeah. very materialistic standpoint rather than integrity yeah. and you know ethics. Thank you. Uh, I, I know our, our viewers too want to speak to this issue, so let me quickly uh, bring in some callers here. Callers, the number is on the screen. Please call. 605-313-6004. The code is 7914030 pound. Dr. Dukle, what what's the link now with Liberia? Because the last time the uh, the US guy called our government a kleptocratic government, they said that uh, <laughs> does they have any link with what's going on in Liberia? You know, when I say in 40 years our country went through a coup d'etat, a war, Ebola, and all of that and that we may be somehow in a different zone, mentally, really, seriously speaking. But at the same time, you know, it's a click, you know, when you look at the government, you say, oh yeah, government steals. Uh, there are more millionaires in Liberia now in the last 15 years than there have ever been in the whole history of the country. Millionaires. People who serve government in two for two years or three years, they become millionaire. They go to this function, and then you wake up and say, "Oh, I have a big farm, ten acres, twenty acres, two thousand acres. What are you doing? How are you getting money? You are getting four thousand dollars. Your family lives in the U.S., so you have to pay your expenses in the U.S. and in Liberia. How do you manage to get a million dollar investment with a four thousand dollar salary when you only work for the government for five years or six years?" So that's kleptocracy. I, people, you know, I, not that I've seen it, but people talk about the chief of protocol Finda, that she has like five buildings in Monrovia, all six, five, six apartment buildings. People, you know, talk about these things. They see it. Uh, the president himself, when he got elected, the first thing he did, he broke down his mansion, you know, his little house and built a mansion. It was so big that he said, so people went and said, oh, it's for his son, who is a professional player. His son said, no, I got nothing to do. I have no money and nothing in do, to do in Liberia. So if you take that model, Doe was not accountable to nobody. Taylor was never accountable to nobody. And then we came after the elections, 2005. Ellen came in. Her fight was what? Corruption, enemy number one. And after 12 years, she said, corruption is a vampire that is in our society because she didn't know how to fix it, she has no clue. It was so big. And that's a reality. Because Liberia probably was set up as a country to fail. The foundations are so shaky. Gongro said that. Jawan Gongro said one time, he said, it's gonna be hard for us to get anywhere because this country was set up on shaky foundations. And if you don't have the right foundation on the house, it's going to be shaking all the time. And that's a problem we have. Kleptocracy, yes, Liberians love thieves. You know, but, you know, somebody say, oh, yeah, we hang the guy who steal a penny, but we glorify the man who steal a billion. It's the same thing. That's a universal say. But in Liberia, we practice it. We practice it. We love it. We love to see people. You know, what's the a, what's a one big claim about Bo George, uh, Mr. Boakai today? What's a, one big complaint people say about uh, Mr. Boakai? He's been in the government for 42 years. He didn't do nothing because he doesn't have a mansion. He doesn't have a 10, 10, 10 a 2,000 acre farm. He doesn't have like a fleet of five, 10 deep, different cars running behind him. Simple. Then I say, no, you didn't build it. You know, you didn't do anything for the government. They say, you don't have anything to show for what you did 40 years in the government. You don't have money. We don't have that in our mind. We just say, oh, we should admire this man. He was close to the president. He could have done anything. He could have stole anything. But he didn't. He's broke today. So maybe he's the right man. But no, we say, oh, you were there for 12 years. You didn't steal nothing. What's wrong with you? Get out of here, man. Who's going to make you president? Yeah, uh, to just pick on what that, what do they say? Um, I, I can I can tell you, um, Councillor Gongo went I, I, from I, I, the center, 
and 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 somebody asked him, "What have you done? You want to be president?" And the person was wearing CDC regalia, you know, and he said, um, "I've done a lot than George Yah did before he became president." I've done a lot than Ellen Johnson Sully did before she became president. I've done a lot than Charles Taylor did before he became president. I taught George, uh, Joy Howard Taylor, the current vice president. I taught Granny Samuka. Um, I provided free legal services for Jefferson Koji, Molba Molu, Akaras Gray. All these people were my client. They didn't pay me. I could have charged them. And the list go on. I've done all these things. None of these people too. for the country. So. You know, so, so that's what they call me poor man lawyer. So I don't have money to give to that Thai sender when they come here. But let me tell you, July this year, you're going to come and pack truck low arrives and say we cannot celebrate Independence Day. Warrior. They've never done that before, but they will start to do it in 2023. So it, it's, it's, you. It's, a, it's a culture sometimes, you know. And the yeah. voters themselves do that. The, 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 the expectation. The voter expect that somebody will run in. Let, let's, let's see if we have some time left, then we can talk about our main topic for the day. That is, what <laughs> should voters, what should the librarians people look for in selecting their president? But let me take a few calls here. Everybody want to participate in this topic. We start with first, Mr. Elvis Morris. You are first caller. Go ahead, Elvis, you're live. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. John. I just uh, saying hello to the panelists tonight. I just want to let you know personally, don't do anything now embarrass us for associating with your, with your platform. Because we, we, we like you, we respect you, but we, <laughs> we want you to, we won't find any secrets and then we, we, we embarrass us. But let me just say this, Mr. John. <laughs> this today shall light on people like you and your platform that you have. Slow and steady wins the race. That's why some of us will gravitate to this platform because we see you're a man of integrity, you're level-headed, you're not boisterous, and you, you come with sound you know, discussions. We're not looking for the numbers. Some of us, we, we love this platform and it seems like we're always online, we're always following you. Not because you're the most popular, but because you're the most informative and the most honest. So we have to give you your flowers tonight. The whole thing with Witherspoon, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm not going to comment on it. I think many people have their inclinations on what, you know, what what, what could come out of it. But just, the, the you know, the appearance of impropriety, the appearance of corruption, you can't be a hypocrite sitting on the platform being disingenuous. Oh, this is about Liberia. This is about the Liberian people. But at the same time, you're doing crooked deals. Why do you think other people can go on that man's show and not your show? Money change hands. And when you're in the media, if you pay money for interviews, you pay money for access, you're already corrupt. So we appreciate you more and more because you do it the right way. We'll grow the platform little by little. We individually will spread the word and this platform will grow. We're not looking for who gets the 10,000 views or 100,000 views. We want honest discussions like you have on this platform with people of integrity that you bring on your panel. So thank you so much, Mr. Pat. This is, I'm giving you a flower today. The <laughs> kind of statement is about you and what you build on this platform. So thank you again. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let's go to our Dr. Batam Kula. Dr. Kula, you're alive. Yeah. Mr. Ja, I'm glad the uh, caller earlier said what he said to you, and I want to reiterate that. But I think what has happened again to the Liberian people with this gambling issue is sort of what happened to Black America when the Eddie Long situation happened with those boys. Liberian people, again, have been let down by someone who presented themselves as looking out for the Liberian people, or having integrity and all that. And the people took, took in that face value. And that is our problem. We are a poor judge of character. So we see people on the surface and we take them for what they say. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes and whatnot. And so what I want to say to us as a people, let's start asking the hard questions. I was one of those who kept questioning, where is this guy getting all this money from? And somebody told me, oh, then I was that I business where he gets the money from. And I've seen people who are saying that. I've seen people are saying, now let's pray for him, even though he's in almost the same situation as Shaq Bashu that was throwing money at the bicentennial, and now he got caught in that million dollar scheme or whatever. Uh, uh, Ellen Cochran, Dr. Cassell, 
all of these people that keep letting our people down over and over again? When will we have people with integrity? And when will you guys in the media dig enough so that we know where these people are coming from that are influencing our politics? If you come to influence our politics, if you come to influence our government, our country, we need to know where you're getting your money from, where you're buying your influence, where you're getting your influence from. So we need to start asking the hard questions. We need to start digging deep on every character that presents themselves as the savior of our nation. Thank you. Th th thank you. Sometimes you start asking those questions, uh, Dr. Kula, to say, oh, the man's jealous. Let me welcome Mr. James Na Lassa. Mr. Lassa, you're live. Oh, thank you, thank you, Dennis. I want to say hi to Dr. Abdullah Dukle, to Ministry and Kalebu and the rest of the folks that I met. Uh, look, the subject on is very realistic, even though it is also sad. Uh, the fact is that there has now been set an established pattern here uh, for uh, humanitarians, um, especially Liberian humanitarians, uh, who can get money and jump into politics, but uh, you don't see them doing anything to do with it at all, regardless of how they got the money. In this case, unfortunately, uh, uh, there, is an, there, there is an established pattern, like, for example, in uh, 2005, there was a fellow that came from Ohio from the senior healthcare uh, industry, uh, senior nursing thing, when he uh, took part in the Bond County election in 2005, he ran along with our current VP and the others, and, uh, and he and the VP were very, very, very cool, and he came to in that election, and only the first two could win. So uh, he didn't make it, uh, but the way he lavished his money, he got uh, spotted on the radar and he was equally you know, arrested and he sent detention to the in Ohio or somewhere else. Now, we also know of the cases of uh, now the, um, you know, the young uh, political leader who passed the last time. And don't worry about the uh, Nigerian with a Nigerian name, Sheikh Busari or something like that. Who else was, you know, dashing uh, money all around in Moldavia? Only the father that he was involved in, in B and operation. Uh, we don't know what is that case is with this young fellow, but it's not bad to give when, when one has money. Uh, I have to note, particularly Janice, that uh, uh, people who come from religious background or in fact, let me put it this way, most people who give, who give, abundantly, extremely, exceptionally abundantly, are often of the religious background and influenced by their own uh, spiritual orientation. And uh, listening to uh, the young man on his radio station, you always hear him speak about how he grew up in the church. And even as you easily come across as being limited in many other ways, you often easily come across as well as somebody who is quite versed when it comes to religious matters and you know, Christianity and things, growing up in the church, singing, being a choir, singing songs. So uh, coming from that orientation and learning from the Bible, it's easy to see that you might have felt the need to give back. But okay. the question is, how, 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 how else could, couldn't he give back? You're looking at real, all of those who have who have money, who cares? They, they only take even like you hear about a former finance, finance minister who now is in uh, Bapu County trying to run for the Senate, who is said to have a massive lot of money. He says 1,000, 2,000 for people to build multi there. You never send money for, for them to build computer labs for children to learn something good that will help them in the future or send them to the month. And we all know that that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a worst way to, to help people. Now, uh, the URA, the title, the school, you know, you're not talking about building computer lab or, or some laboratory or some school. You know, it's just that. So, thank, in the case you. of the young man, you know, you try to project yourself to the, uh, the, the mass media and try to negatively influence the policies of that era. And today, it's sad. Thank, so, thank uh, you. Thank you, Mr. Lazar. We, we, all, we, all we all can learn from that and we got it. Thank you for the time I'll be listening, okay? Thank, thank you. Let me, we got a couple more callers here. Let me take Mr. Janentan Tote. Janentan Tote, is that you? 401 area code. 
All right, let's go to Darling Warwood. Darling, you alive? Am I having some problem here? <laughs> GS Camus, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Go ahead, GS Camus, you're live. Okay, good evening and thank you again for the topic and to the panelists. But uh, I would just like to say that it just started with Liberia, but the situation is not only Liberia, the Liberia is just getting into it. Because most of the time, I know most Nigerians who are engaged in this, like go home and other stuff, they do the same thing. The Liberia is just starting it. So uh, thank you, Dennis, and we all will follow your show. And the Liberia people are just to say short and the Liberian people, they get like freaking. So they don't care how you got it, where you got it from, once you give it to them, they take it. I remember I was watching uh, some, some uh, something about Top Man Hat, Dollar Dillon, and uh, Senator Dillon, and Senator Bachar Tipu went there. For all the speeches and things they were giving the students, you know, they would travel for the school, they would do this, they would do this. You don't find it so clapping, but as soon as they say, we will pay away. They took a money to give me the whole. Because all the classes were dancing and started to sing that, oh, that they don't want the light, the light back, the light is back. They get like free to once you get free money, they glorify you, they don't care where you took the money. They don't say, now we give giving the money, they don't use that word. And when you're giving it to the teachers or so, he says, we, 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 we gave you all the money now, we ain't here. Well, some guy will say, we took money, we stole money. You know, he put it in their faces and he gave it to them. So that, that's the situation we find ourselves in. Once the people are poor, in public people, anything you get in, they take it, they want it. Yeah. What are you steal? What are you, you got it right? Either, any way you got it, they, they take it. They don't care for any other thing. So that's what goes on in Liberia. Thank, that's thank, what we're seeing here. Thank you, Mr. Kamal. Thank you again. Uh, for, but as well as our show, at least we own our little phone raising. We get our little 20, 20, 10, 10 dollars. So we'll continue it. Thank Th you. Thank you so much for your support. Mr. Tote, are you there now? Yeah, uh, Mr. Down here. Go, go ahead, you're live. Okay, good evening and good evening to Dr. Dukle. Uh, Mr. Jazz, uh, I fully agree with Dr. Dukle because I'm a nursing student, two years in a nursing program. I understand the ethics when it comes to nursing in the procedure and the process for one to become nurse. It is sad to know that people getting a diploma of RNs there for 15,000 without going through the process. Like for example, what Dr. Dugley said, you will fall into an accident, you go to the hospital, you fall out with this nurse or you meet with a nurse who just got a diploma for 15,000, do not know anything about you know, how to you know, carry on procedure, it will just operate on you before you go, low, will probably pass away. So one thing again is that Liberians, you know, our image are, are damaging on the international scene. Quite recently, it was that Kershaw, Shep Basho, and Eddie Cochran. Today, our brother who are dying is a millionaire, you know, Senator Wallace have been caught. So it is embarrassing for we, the Liberians, are here. Some of all we have in you know, the potential that we want to establish business or we want to do in you know, our business with the government. But when you call your name, you are Liberian, the people will start thinking, oh, is that the same Liberian or the other guy? One Liberian was called in the similar manner who want to do or, 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 or establish college and, and water spoon or that of cashew. So they are damaging our image. I understand mm -hmm. people are insulated with that uh, Mr. Water Spoon, but this is not the time. This is okay. not something that you not do and did it deliberately. From 2015 to 2023, it is deliberately intent. That's something that you are benefiting, a family have been benefiting from. So people will not say that, like people politicize the thing or people you know, don't like uh, uh, Mr. Waterspoon. No, we do like him. On the day Mr. Waterspoon started a, spoon, uh, a, a program, he said that we were giving people during the COVID time, giving back a red. He answered one question and gave you two back a red. He and or 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 or
They don't own and they turn the whole show to, uh, to politics. You see? So they are damaging our image. And I say people would not be intimidated uh, with Wallace Poo. Wallace Poo is my own brother from Sino County. I'm from Sino. But the idea is related as something that is taking deliberately in damaging the image of Liberian, especially for some of us that only nursing feet that want to become you know, professional night or want to become doctor tomorrow. Thank, thank you. Th thank you. Let me take uh, the last caller here. Darling, what would? Are you there now? Darling, go ahead. You're live. All right. Thank you for having me, Dennis. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I know of this girl. She's a wife of my personal friend. I think she's the victim of that situation. She's actually standing now to, to her table. Mm -hmm. She uh, can't do anything from home, and she went to Florida for a week. So in like, a clinic for a week. I don't know which nursing school or for clinic for a week. And she's the victim. She's not happy about the whole thing. You know, you know the whole lesson thing is that. So, so, so darling, so, since you brought it now, let me let me ask you. So, that person did that person yeah. actually go to school in, or go to Stanton College or they just bought it? No, so she she go to school online. W which school? She's the at oh, folks. I was not in school, but it's 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 it, it, it has to do with Stanton College. Okay. Yeah, that, that whole conglomerate, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we call it Stanton College now for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's it from Florida, and by Monday, I push you there for a week to do clinical. So when the whole process started, when it, the, my boy told me that the girl was in a nursing program, I said, but did she do the ACINT? He said, no. I said, did she send her transcript to the Education Evaluation Board to evaluate her, her, her grades and send it directly from the, the board to the school? He said, no, they don't, they don't have to end of those things. I said, hmm, something is not right. So this morning, he and I were talking about it. And he's like, yeah, you told me, you asked me no questions. I said, if, if, I mean, the writings are on the wall. You got what? And, and again, it should be 18000 actually. 18000 For what? The, the, the 18000 for the entire school year or for what? For the entire school year, which I think, like I said, she's paying for a state for so I think she did in school. I think it was for less than seven, eight months. I think seven, right. eight months. Please, if you if you can, we, we, we want to talk to one person who went to start on college. So if they can come and focus on LaBro, we'll be a, we'll appreciate it. Which college? I, I don't think you would get somebody to come here to now to come for me. No, not tonight. Let's try. The, the schools have yeah, named so, plenty, so we yeah. just call it Stanton College for short. Sure. So the whole thing for nursing school, you, you don't just enroll at a nursing school like you you walk in a path. You are, if you do if you didn't go to a, maybe a community college to do some pre rent and accumulate accumulate some some you know credit and then wait for you know you have to it's a waiting period you have to wait to enroll. Or if you want to go to a private school which is a little more expensive, then you have to do the AT. ACRT when you pass because it's the upper math English, the upper math science, and the English comes in two folds. They have the English got the writing and the reading skills. You got to pass all those before you can. You, you even have to sit for interview. You you need references. There's a whole it's a there's a whole view of that. It's, it's a protocol. You don't let mm. go somewhere. Yes, somebody says you promise to pay us or you can and you say you're going to go to that school. Without ATIMP results, without a uh, credit score, without waiting for us, because it, it, it's not possible. So the writings are all over the place. So those people are not taking. Mm. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Six hundred. Yeah, that that that's not easy. And with respect to what uh, that a do said concerning Mr. Black Eye, uh, former VP, uh, it's something that that didn't click to, to me, and I just kind of recognize that tonight. That this man has been in government, it is said that he has been in government for 40 years, but he's broke. That means he has not stolen government money. He didn't steal. That's why he's broke. And that's why he doesn't have uh, uh, the kind of support that John Weir have or the kind of support that Sarah has. <laughs> he doesn't have the kind of support that McGill have right now. McGill sold millions of dollars and he, you know, with him money here and there. But that guy is not doing his thing. That's why he doesn't have the kind of group you try behind other people. Because he doesn't have stolen money. So, that to do, I think you just. Got a uh, you just converted somebody, but uh, 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 Joe Baga tonight. 
thank thank you, thank you, darling. And uh, uh thank you. Th thank you. And if you if you are watching and you went to Central College, please uh we want you to uh give me a call. We want to interview people who went to that school. I mean, so that we can get the story a little clearer. Uh Mr. Dropo, let me come to you first here is um and, and respond to our callers. And one thing uh, I got from a lot of them is how we uh, sometimes we know something doesn't look right, but we are not asking the questions, right? I don't because when you ask too much, they say, you know, like, hey, everybody roll with it, right? Because it is what it is. So we are not asking questions. I was asking someone who normally they will check on these are degrees, fake degrees, because we've done a show yet on fake credentials, right? So we have this group called, I think, CCAC something. I said, but why you guys never look into this? He said, oh, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't know. And there have been questions. People say, okay, I mean, why do you think these questions were really not asked or if they were just, or maybe sometimes asked in passing? We, we, we've not been very critical, you think? Well, like, sometimes it's like, just like, not... Come again? No, Dr. Drew, I say you are muted. You were saying something. I say you are muted just in case you. Go ahead, Mr. Drupal. Mr. Drupal. Well, I, I don't know what you mean by saying something, you know? I mean. I, I, why, why would it push on these things? You know, if. Why, why nobody, you know. No, uh, let me come. I, I, I got your answer. Mm -hmm. Why we don't ask, you know, it, and this goes to the first question that you have on your, you know, program today ideology, political ideology. We have, when I talk about the 40 years we went into crisis, this nation has been in crisis for 40 years. Either you believe it or not, it is. Electing somebody who has never made a speech, who has never done anything except play football as president, speaks to where we are as a nation. And the fact that we can just sit down and say, oh, he's giving us rice or t-shirts, so we're gonna vote for him, or we're going to say, yeah, you the light, you the man. In 40 years, Liberia has done nothing for itself. We've been dependent, totally dependent. The peace came from outside. The rice came from outside. The medicine came from outside. The, me the ideas came from outside. Everything we did was to, you know, please somebody from outside because we wanted to get something out. It was a survival thing, rice. WFP was king in Liberia in the 1990s. They gave rice, fish, oil, Everybody ate, and then we talk, you know, peace. UN, ECOWAS brought peace. We won election, they pay for it. And we get used to this dependency thing. People just, you know, whatever you, whatever you got. And plus, this comes after 120 years of a culture of total submission, subjectivity, total submission to one order. You go from that, you come to Do, who was supposed to be the salvation, and then he became more corrupt than the past. And then you got to Taylor. Taylor make Do look like a saint, a Muhammad Gandhi. <laughs> and then we go to the transitionals, and then we come to Ellen. We would do education, we do corruption, we will do reconciliation. And at the end, at the 12 years of end of it, we say, no. We didn't get to do reconciliation. We didn't get to do this. We didn't get to do that. And Liberian people say, okay, what do I expect from politicians? Whatever they can give me, I don't care because they're all the same. So there's this cynical aspect of us on one side and on the other side, you have this dependency mentality that has developed over 40 years. When Tobol conducted his first election, I think it was 1973, I voted twice. I voted in Clashland and I went to Morovia, I voted. But I was 98. Nobody asked me a good question. But 
he didn't ask international community for money. Nobody knew you know, it was our election. We carried those things. But now we can't even count how many people live in the country. We have to go beg money to know how many people live in the country. That's the problem. We have real serious issues. If we don't think back and say, what happened to us in the last 40 years and how it affected all of us, our mindsets. And then the problem, the other problem we have is you, Dennis, Dupo, Klebo, Hamid Salif, we are all in exile. That's the middle class. That's the Liberian middle class. That's the intelligentsia. We have educated Liberians. We don't have an intelligentsia. Because intelligentsia is a group of intellect, intellectuals sitting together and say, we're going to frame a path forward. The Republicans have intelligentsia. They have, even have a school in DC. Hmm. Democrats have a school where they train people to say, this is where we want to go with the country. Either you like it or you like it, you stay. You don't like it, you go to the Republicans. But we don't have such things because all of the intellectuals, the middle class, is in exile. What do you have left? People who cannot come to America. You put a tunnel between Liberia, Morovia and New York and see who will stay in Morovia. Thank, thank, thank you. We have critical issues. More important than, you know, Stanton Peabody is part of, you know, a system of stealing. You steal, you show off. Right. You steal, you show off. And people like you. Not because of your good or bad, but because of the crumbs you give them because they've been so used to be trampled on, used to be deprived and brought down to survival level. You can give them anything. They'll say, yes, you're our man. We have to work so, up the mindset. So, so let's look at the, the lesson we learned from this. I mean, I, I know it's too early to say, well, this is the end of it, but just based on what we know so far, what can we learn from it? Uh, let me start with you, Mr. Salih. Or what can Liberia <laughs> learn from it? What, what's wrong with our values? In fact, I have uh, contacted a psychologist and a uh, sociologist so we can talk about Liberian values. Mr. Salif, go ahead. Mm. What, what do we learn from this one? Well, I, you know, I think um, mainly to our young people, I, I think this whole thing of a fast life, wanting to live a flamboyant life, to, to impress people, uh, <laughs> you know, to be, live rich and there's nothing wrong with success. You work hard or you're smart, you work smart, you know how to invest, you know how to make your money work. This is the United States of America. You can start a small investment portfolio, a couple of hundred dollars. You, if you know how to do it or you, you hire somebody, a firm, your money can start working and multiplying itself in no time. And so you can easily become a wealthy person or your profession, you could be a very educated person, you're in a profession that pay you, yeah, you could be a very very highly paid individual who, who then uh, reinvest that money and save that money to make money work for you, that's fine. Success is a good thing to celebrate. However, um, to start cutting corners and taking shortcuts and living from buoyant life, a lifestyle that you didn't earn or you can't afford. I think that therein lies the problem. Uh, so if there's any lesson, I would say, you know, that's what we ought to look at really like, okay, so let's question somebody's source of income. It's not possible, like Dr. Dukla was saying, if you were in government for six years or four years and your salary was $4,000, you, you have these things that cost easily $3 million that you're doing so what are you doing right that those of us who are living by the books are doing wrong? You know, I mean, it's so, and we don't ask these questions. They're like, oh, it's just jealous, it's just envy, and the, mm -hmm. of, the person was a minister. And the person, that doesn't mean because you were a minister, you're expected to be a wealthy person after you've left office. If you didn't steal, you didn't plunder public resources at all. Um, so I've always tried to, to ask people that question, man. Do you have some kind of company? You don't impress me if all of a sudden you live in an affluent lifestyle just because you, you've entered government, because you have access to budget, you you know, you, you can cut back deals and things like that. That doesn't impress me. 
um, what if you show me you have some kind of holding company, you are an, an innovator, an entrepreneur, you bring business, you have, you know, you have international connections that brings and you into some kind of private sector business or something work with government that makes you wealthy and you're successful that way, you're spending your money, then you impress me. So I'll say, um, you know, just those of us who mentor and talk to young people a lot, that's one thing to pay attention to. And another is to really ask a hard question, maybe a friend, maybe a relative, say, listen, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to question your, your motive or your source of income, but I, I want to make sure that, you know, there are consequences to, to every decision you make now. Yeah. So you're making the right decisions. Because in this country, no matter what you do, if you don't understand how the financial system or the government, like Dr. Drupal was saying, things are very interconnected. Uncle Sam, the long arms of the law reaches anywhere and everywhere. And so you need to be careful. You're making a phone call, doing a video conversation, sending email, uh, things across the wire, the system that you didn't create. You're only living it and taking it for granted that laws governing all of these things, the regulations governing all of these things that we see in America. Thank, thank you. James Tanu is watching us. He said, my girlfriend, best friend, went to Stanton School by paying 15000 for two weeks. She said the questions and answers were given to them to the state board test. She just passed it. <laughs> and, uh, and James said, I will bring her uh, tomorrow to call your show. James, we want to actually interview her, even if she will do it uh, off camera. Or want to talk to her, want to talk to her. Uh, I don't know if you remember this. <laughs> I mean, this fellow. Well, this Saturday at 11, we're going to have Minister Nuchi Michael. Nuchi Michael is the uh, librarian cross dresser. He's now, uh, he has converted and he's, uh, he's no longer cross dressing. He said the desire to cross dress and act like women all are gone. He's now the minister of the gospel. He got his, uh, he's coming up with a CD early February. And we're going to have him here uh, on Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern. That's 5 p.m. local time in Monrovia. You don't want to miss it. Also, this Saturday at 7 p.m. on the Library History Channel, <laughs> the Presidents of Liberia series continues with our presenter, Carl Fambole. And this time we are talking about the 14th President, Garrison W. Gibson. Keep following Focus on Liberia, where we educate, we elevate, and promote all things Liberia. At this time, we're going to go to our Tabata session. I want to remind you every day or Mr. every week Gongolo, there's Tabata going on in Liberia. Mr. Gongolo, you saying something? I wanted to make a quick comment on, I think, dude. Yeah, sure. Uh, um, uh, Ahmed may comment in passing on um, our political value and judgment and value system. Um, I just want to make the point. But I mean, like you said, most of our library has produced more millionaires in the last 15 years than it ever did maybe the 100 years plus before, you know. And so, they all work for government. Yeah, they all work for government. They're not business. So what, what the guys have been doing, I mean, um, without even saying I'm having a complete list of them, if you look in the legislature today, Senator Snow, Senator Kuhn, Thomas Fala, uh, the list go on. All these guys, uh, uh, um, or Sir Joseph, if you look at the assets, what they are engaging, there are millions worth millions of dollars. Look at Snow Farm in Bombay. So what they're basically doing, they're taking taxpayer money, passing it, cleansing the true business. That's all they're doing. To make it appear legitimate money, that they actually earn the money. So they were never business people when they were not in government. Once they got in government and start to make money, they pass through that to clean the money and say, hey, we are now legitimate business people. And that is all they're doing. And they are all, you know, the list, there are so many of them, ministers. But, but Mr. Mr. Gonglo, I work for government and, I, and people, I mean, I remember spending several months with even car. I used to get on taxi to go to work and, and all those were 
we're, we're having vehicles, we're having this. It, then I realized that, oh, so in government, when you come, you have to have some contact to GSA to go to this place. I was just um, a novice, you know, and I was just working. I mean, I, I, I used to leave the first six months, I, I thought I should come back to the US, really. I just thought I was misplaced, you know. Yeah, what were you saying, Dennis? That, yeah, what, what I'm saying here is our response to them, you, you listed some people, but the way we, we truck behind them like obedient pets. So what, what do you expect? No, no, no. So that's what they do. But you see, I think it's, a, it's for me, I think Liberia is Liberian. I don't know whether it's safe for them to say Liberia in majority, they may just be inherently corrupt or I should not say so. Because I gave you a few instances. I was teaching Tom Meha. I taught in Tom Meha for four years. There is a guy in this country, I don't know where he is now, they call him Hiram Fumble. He was principal for Tom Meha at the time. So one day he, you know, I was I was living to a street. He called me in his office. He said, there's, there's something strange about you. I said, why? He said, all the teachers gave take home tests. You don't give take home tests. You know, it may be strange to all of you here because you never went through that. Take home tests was a culture, it's a was a culture of the 90s. Because teachers were not being paid. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you teach, when it's time to get period test, you give the test as take home test to the student. And they take it home to do the test. When they come by, if they are if they are 12 girls, they bring in 200 dollars like Brenda with a test, you know. <laughs> if they are 11th grade or maybe 150, 10th grade or 125 and what have you, you know, then if you're teaching three, four classes, mm -hmm. you're taking a sack of, 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 of black plastic bear with you home. I was not doing that. So Dr. Formula called me and said, there's something strange about you. You don't do that. I said, because the philosophy of test is to see if the student understood what you taught. And I went to Samaras, I was never trained that, you know, so it, it beat my imagination that I will give take on test. There is no longer a test. I will give the test on campus. And that's what I was, you. you know, so, so, but here is the point I was trying to make. My brother, I have a brother, he's a lawyer today, Councillor Philip Gongo. He actually, he's a trained teacher, he went to KRTTR. You know why he stopped, he left, he resigned and became, he went to school to study accounting. Then he went to law school. He was teaching for the government. He was a Samsung on Oro. He was teaching elementary. Even though he did um Gion High uh, B got B certificate for KRTT. He was teaching math. And this little girl in fifth grade, I think fourth or fifth grade, walked to him and, and said, if he, if she can give hundred dollars to him, so he can give you know make give or pass him back. And he said, how did you know that you can give money to 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 to, to teacher? And the little girl explained to him that oh that what my friend can do to the other teachers. So he said no. So I'm actually sitting in a culture that students thinking that we're all doing this. He walked out and he went to the principal and said, I don't want to be a teacher anymore because all the teachers are doing bad things here. A little girl walked to me to give me a hundred dollars to pass her. And that was the first time I've heard a fourth grader do to do such a thing. And he left the school. So it, it's something that is all over the place. People just cover it. They don't want to talk about it, you know. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk it. Let, let's go to our Tabata session. Tabata every week, almost every day, there's some Tabata going on in Liberia, and Dr. Dugo will agree. So let's start with you, Doc. What's your Tabata of the week? I guess my Tabata is this um, thing that is we just talked about. You know, I used to watch um, Spoon TV, you know, the discussions, and and I got to know Stanton just by seeing him on the screen. I have never met him before. I don't, you know, I, I met. I know the rest of the people, but I've never met them. But this coming out this morning. First, I saw the news, and then you sent me the thing, and I read it. 
And I say, wow, this is bad. It's bad because I'm saying, how can a young man do this in the healthcare system? Would the FBI lie on him? That's my tabata. It really broke my heart personally that you know Stanton was involved in this somehow, or he was directly or indirectly involved, and the FBI caught him because I trusted that image. I trusted that image that was on the on TV on the screen in front of me that I said, okay, these people are talking about national issues that we can discuss. And I don't know what to say, really. Thank That's you. my tabata. My tabata, all that tabata is the vice president being booed at the university, but then she comes, you know, everybody has been booed by the university. So, but anyway, <laughs> really, you. my tabata is this uh, Stanton people, the thing, Stanton Witherspoon thing, and it really bothered me because I liked their show and I used to watch him and I kind of started to think that he meant something real. But if you can do that and do this, then... Thank you. Mr. Mr. Gonglo, what's your Tabata of the week? Tabata, by the way, is a word from the crew speaking, meaning nonsense. Complete. <laughs> and, you know, and, and the people sometimes, the foolish name, they will say foolish. Say. Complete foolish. Say. Go okay. ahead, uh, Mr. I, I can tell you, Denise, that everybody's adapted it now. Everybody uses it on every platform. Everybody says Tabata. So thank you for it. <laughs> Mr. Gonglo, what's your Tabata of the week? Yeah, Tabata SSS is also on YouTube. Yeah, that's that's I think Chinese or so or Japanese. Um no, I I I I really don't have Tabata. I'm a Tabata to say utter nonsense, but I just saw something funny on Facebook. You know, like girls make fun all of things. Somebody made a banner post and say, Can you imagine some of the Stanton College nursing? Nurses could be treating Ambassador Baca now. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> okay, that, we consider that your Tabata. Let me go to Mansfield. Mr. Dwopo, what's your Tabata of the week? My Tabata, you know, I'm not going to focus on Liberia per se because, you know, I'm a That's global fine. affairs guy. And you know, I look at different things that are happening in different countries and following global trends. Well, uh, my Tabata is the whole docu. Uh, saga in america you know the docu gate where uh former president trump you know took away some uh classified documents to mar-a-lago you know that investigation uh, you know i mean there's 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 a independent council investigating that then president biden it was found that he had some uh, classified documents at his uh some private office at the university of pennsylvania and uh, even at his home, you know, in Delaware. And, and uh, there's an investigation on that matter. Then uh, I think a few days ago, former Vice President Pence, too, had some uh, classified documents at his house. So I don't know where this is going now. Uh, there's a, there's a, some uh, senators and lawmakers are calling for uh, the FBI to, you know, send out a, a memo to former uh, presidents and vice president in the last maybe 10, 15 years to check their, their closets, you know, check their archives to make sure that they don't have any, you know, uh, document, uh, uh, top secret document or classified document in their, you know, in, 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 their, in their archives or their, their closets. So now, you know, people are scrambling, going, yeah. checking and making sure that, you know, they're conforming to the FBI's uh, memo. So I don't know if any of you guys have any documents that you think uh, is, you know, classified, that, uh, you know, you can, you can you can try to make that available to the FBI, you know, so you can, you know, fall prey to, you know, the federal dragnet. So I, I was just thinking about it as a tabata, you know? Right. And, and, and just in case you don't have, if you don't have a classified document, probably you have a Stanton College diploma. Definitely, definitely. definitely. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Salif, what's your tabata of the week? I know you, you always want to 
Yeah. I don't have a... Uh, 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 Mr. 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 Tali, before, before you go, you remind me of, uh, you know, when God was dividing all the tails, right? Right. So the tails were in a big holy bag. So when God put his hand there, he gave the tail to the animal. So God talked the longest tail was going to be last. So when they were dividing the tail, you were always going back, thinking that the longest tail was going to be in the bag. So by the time they got to God, all the tail were finished. And the short one, just like this, was that's why God got short tail today. <laughs> so stop pushing back. God didn't get a memo. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your tomato of the week? I want, well, I want. My, my tomato has to come back to the Western cluster. Um, there's a guy, I forgot his name, but he's a very senior, uh, prominent person in Bomi County uh, and running for office, I think, in the coming elections. Uh, this guy is collecting signatures, is carrying on a campaign that he caused to impeach uh, Senator Edwin Snow uh, in, rather than recall because electorates, voters don't impeach, they recall, right? <laughs> but his his campaign is about impeachment, so impeach, and he doesn't even call it impeach, he say impeach, they want to <laughs> impeach. <laughs> they want to impeach. It could be else. Exactly, and then, and then he, he, uh, he, agree, he, agree English. Agree English. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they want to impeach the man. Uh, and he enumerates all, all kinds of allegations against snow from when some things you never heard of before that this guy is is, is not too far away from the problems of liberia you know uh, is he yeah he calls him names and collecting signatures to try to uh essentially recall the senator because they accuse him of uh entering in contrast uh, with uh, an indian company now that is uh, mining the iron ore in Bomi uh, this, just for their own personal aggrandizement, their own personal benefits, not to the benefit of the people of Bomi. He lays things like, for instance, said the people in Bomi don't even sleep. There are 78 uh, trucks, truck loads of iron ore every single day passing through the towns and the, you know, and it's just and all kinds of health hazards and things like that. It sounded funny, but it's really serious when you look at some of the allegations that they're making and how the citizens of Bomi are suffering uh, is, is this a very sad situation. If, Dennis, can Thank I you. add something to that? Because I was thinking about the Western cluster because I would say, this was two weeks ago, it was hot, everybody was talking about it. And all of a sudden, <laughs> boom, it's going after the, yeah, it's going after the new, yeah. new cycle. What happened? Yeah. Who got paid? Well, Who got paid? My my uh my tower tower of the week goes you know maybe some forty years ago, but because this week I saw there was a tornado in uh, Texas. The cities in Texas, I mean, it smashed the cars and things like that. And then I remember that growing up, there was a guy who was accused always of being responsible of lightning and thunderstorm. So every time. <laughs> So every time this guy was accused and even beaten, because people, you know, we live in a tropical rainforest, right? So people die from lightning and thunderstorm flashing, right? And then he was accused of uh, being responsible as a witchcraft. Wow. And his name was called David Two. David Two, short guy. I still remember as a kid growing up. So when I saw this, as uh, tornadoes, I say, I wonder if David too has resurrected and come on this side. <laughs> <laughs> so today, accusing people of this natural thing. Yeah, this is all, all kinds of things by his finish. You really? Let's see what our viewers are saying. This one from our top viewer, Mr. Houston Bruce, my tablet of the week is FOL, making the Stanton case a topic of discussion on Tough Talking Thursday. To him, that's complete tabata. Sam Wallow, the Tabata of the Week is the impression being created by these recent high-profile cases against Liberians that successful Liberians in and out of Liberia are all crooks. I'm not a common supporter, but this is one time when it needs to be celebrated to establish the right balance. Bill Carson, my Tabata of the Week is Judge We are kissing Prince Johnson's feet and begging him. <laughs> <Back> him. Okay. <laughs> 
Elvis Morris Mantabata is shocked by Siru telling on the Labrin government personal personnel that he worked with. Oh, he's, he's, he's snitching now, right? <laughs> This one from uh, Hashem Formula Matabata of the Week is that Kev on Spoon lack of understanding and comprehension. How is that? Type of... Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Every, somebody wants to talk about Kev. So those are the uh, the Tabata we have. We. We were supposed to uh, go into our topic today, but our water cooler issue took hold. And so that's it. We will conclude at this time. Thank you so much for participating. Let, let's let's uh, conclude on this one. I know I asked the question, uh, Baton Cooler say, my Tabata of the week is Stanton College. <laughs> uh, Darren Warwood, my Tabata of the week is Henry Costa running away from his own show this morning so he doesn't get to talk about Stanton, Stanton Gate. <laughs> All right, so let's let's conclude with this, you know, the overall implication. You know, I talk about the lesson learned and the implication, even though this is alleged, we want to say uh, uh, the case is, j this is just an indictment. He can walk free and so with this, what, what can we learn from it? What is the overall implication to uh, everything that we do, including our politics, even talk shows? Because it happens that uh, the one being uh, accused of allegedly engaging in this is like one of us. Dr. Duke, let's start with you. Lesson learned? Lesson learned, I, I, don't, I don't know if there's anything to learn from this, except that, you know, People do stupid things and they think they can get away with it and they get caught and they say, you do the crime, you do the time. Uh, if it comes up innocent or if you plead and get out with a good sanction, but the lesson is America is not Liberia. You don't come here and tell somebody, send me $20 and I'm going to send you a book. You don't send the book. The person can take you and sue you. That's fraud. You could go to jail for a long time. Simple, as simple as that. But our people don't know. These people come here and then they have this, it's all open. It's all open to everyone. You know, you can do anything, you can do free. But they don't know that under that freedom, that sense of freedom that you have, you can drive anywhere, go to any place, do anything. Under that, there's a structure. There's a structure that has been functioning for 200 years, and that is they catch the man. They will catch you. Somehow, somewhere, they will catch you. So Liberians who are coming and trying to scheme, Ellen Cochran, she schemed Liberia, she ran away, came back, She's gonna. She's paying for it. Liberia didn't get to her because our system is so corrupt, so Cleopatra, you know, Cleopatra, how do you say, kleptocratic. Nobody goes to jail. In the last six years, how many people have been going to jail for corruption in Liberia? None. The only person who almost went to jail was Samukai because he refused to pay. I can say that today because he refused to pay. He was told to pay. He said, no, I'm not gonna pay because I'm innocent. They said, step away from uh, law for election. He said, no, I'm not going to do it. That's why he was convicted. He's the only one. And cabinet general, of course, because cabinet at the election in 2017 said, no, we cannot have this same election again because the system is wrong. But he's kicked out. But Thank other you. than that. Thank you. Mr. Drupo, your closing comments, talking about the... Uh the implications and less, lesson learned. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, Socrates always, you know, admonished us to know thyself. You know, that's the fulcrum of Socratic philosophy. Mm. Know thyself. In everything you do, you know thyself. You know, in your personal dealings, your business dealings, your political dealings, whatever, you know, vocation or interaction you have with people, you know, you always <coughs> have to know thyself. And it comes to personal responsibility. You know, I know we've 
taking almost two hours, you know, discussing this matter. You know, it, it's a personal matter. You know, I know people kind of, you know, sentimental about it being quote unquote Liberians, you know, the Cochrane story, the uh, Dr. Cassell, now uh, Mr. Witherspoon. You know, these are personal, you know, I mean, ventures, you know, people get rich. They, it, 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 we, we, don't live, we do not live in a, a socialist society where, you know, everything is, you know, uh, corporately owned. You know, you get rich, it's for you and your family. You know, if you engage in, you know, I mean, fraud and other, you know, miscreant deeds, you know, it's your personal responsibility. You know, sometimes we, we get too sentimental that, you know, ascribing people's action with the country. You know, <laughs> no, no, nothing now. Indictment talked about, you know, his Liberianness. I'm sure maybe he's an American citizen. Who knows? I don't know. You know, I don't know him very well. I just, I, I know of him. I know, uh, uh, I know his brothers, two of the older brothers, and I were a crowd growing together in Cruton. You know, I, I, I know the family. You know, before they moved to Gunnersville, I think behind the MTA. But I don't know Stanton personally. I know his older brothers. So, you know, I mean, these are serious charges. The federal government is, 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 is not an easy adversary. I'm sure he's lawyering up, making sure that he has legal representation. This case is massive. It cuts across multiple, you know, jurisdictions, multiple interagency, you know, uh, investigation. So it's not something to play with. You're talking about more than hundred million U.S. dollars. You're talking about people paying fifteen thousand dollars just for a sheet of paper. You know, it's almost like what people pay to the cartels for coming to the United States. They pay the coyotes. You know, so these are people's earnings. Sometimes their livelihood. They, you know, show up. And just to get that paper, and you know, I know they 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 cannot claim to be victims because it's also in criminal law. You know, you 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 thought about it. It's the intent that Anna talked about, you know, the intent. Although intent is hard to be proven, you know, but there are a lot of ways to to gauge intent. If you took your money, you deposited it with it knowing that you, you would benefit something of value, you know? So that makes you a core conspirator. That makes you an accessory before and after the fact, you know? So I know the federal government might not be able to go after them because in every criminal case, they're always the fruit of the crime, the FOC. You know, maybe you, something, you know, tangible like this phone is missing and it, it is retrieved there's the fruit of the crime yeah but in terms of the knowledge the, the experience that those people have gotten some of them have gotten more knowledge maybe on the job you know maybe they, they have gotten paid handsomely bonuses and other things especially during COVID when nurses were in short supply and they were giving all the bonuses how do you get that money back because those that, that money could be viewed as a fruit of a crime, you know? So it's a very delicate balance, you know, that the federal government will be, you know, I mean, the prosecutors. And I'm sure, you know, the, the, the lawyers who will defend Stanton and other people will, will want to see the discovery, you know, that what you do in criminal law, you got to make sure, you know, when you, when you have this evidence, you have to show the evidence to the other side. And it's based on that, they will, they will, they will, they will, they will mount their, their defense. So, you know, I, I had to discuss people, you know, I'm sure there was not intent for this program, but it was good too, because it, 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 it shed light on a lot of other things that are, are happening, you know, in our country and even in the U.S., you know. So it was a very worthy discussion. I'm sure a lot of other people learned from it. We heard the callers calling in the comments that have been made by the viewers and other people. You know, so it was it was important for our own, you know, as individuals too, to always you. know that we owe it to ourselves, our families, our name, because the repetition, once it is solid, you know, it's hard to be retrieved. It's one thing you always hold on to. 
that Thank made you. the repetition, you know. So yeah. I, I, the only thing I would say about any is, you know, I hope he's vindicated. Uh, like he, he, like he, he said on his show today, that you know uh, everything will be fine. He has showed you know his friends and people who were watching that he didn't do anything wrong, and he will be you know vindicated. So you know we just wish for the best for everybody because I mean if somebody is in trouble, I don't care if you know that person or not. It affects that person, his family, people who are associated with him or her. And you know the community because he comes from a community, so he's not. He doesn't exist in isolation, you know. So, I mean, thank you very much, Dennis, again thank, thank for the you. opportunity to share. You know, these uh, very important two hours with these uh, very brilliant uh, men, you know. And I wish everybody a very good night. And I think my kids been calling me for us to go eat dinner, so thank you know. You. But can I just say something to you, uh, Masfi? When you say the Liberia issue, there is not linked to Liberia. It, it doesn't matter the U.S. linked it to Liberia or not. It's for you. The burden is on you. The mental burden is on you as a Liberian. Nurse showing up tomorrow at work and say, "No, but Doc, I will push back on that." Hold on, hold on. I don't think. I, I don't think because what I do in my personal life is not linked. You know, in any way, shape, or form, to you know, maybe it's yours or somebody else, even my brothers or sister. If yeah. if 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 this issue Mr. comes, Mister Mister Mr. we got your point. We 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 gotta we gotta go because okay 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 yeah that that's mm -hmm. something that we can all debate. I want us to talk briefly about Mister Houston Bro, one of our loyal followers here. He said discussing the downfall of a fellow citizen is more of a gossip show. How does that contribute to the development of Liberia? What does that have to do with? The upcoming elections in Liberia. Tough talking Thursday makes the mark today. I say, Mr. Brooks, you are wrong. Let's say, uh, Mr. Cassell, we had a fraud charges and we had a show. You didn't see anything. If this were mm -hmm. Mr. Boakai or Mr. Cummings, you would think it will have anything on Liberia, but, but not an individual who is who has dominated or who dominating the, the media landscape in the whole country. Okay, it's a public figure. It's a public figure, and you say it's nothing. I beg to differ. It's not gossip. Mr. Salif, you're, you're, you're closing. Thank you. The, the public figure comment takes care of everything. Mm -hmm. It's the public figure. And so you discuss uh, when news spreads about them, uh, it impacts people, it impacts society. That's why you talk about it. Uh, uh, my closing, you know, America the beautiful. Uh, come here, work hard, make life, be successful spread spread the well spread you know our success gain knowledge gain skills um follow a career be successful in it again invest do business engage in entrepreneurship build your community your children people around you this is what we ask people to do immigrants come here america is about immigrant story uh you know the american story is about immigrant story it's about immigration story and so this is now to dampen that light or to put that light out and discourage anyone, but do it in a legitimate way. Do it, uh, you know, so that you are following the law. You're not trying to cut corners and break the laws because like everybody has said, you know, we come here and see the lights on, the light is shining, tall buildings, everywhere looks beautiful. And then it's not quite like our country communities and villages were left behind right we there's a reason why they're looking like this because they they're not perfect you can see that political system but if the system have been as corrupt as you know as uh messed up as ours is and we, as we're trying to get out of we wouldn't be running to come here so you come here you don't understand this society you you think you, and, and these are all allegations, right? Like everybody is saying is alleged until the court, court is proven. But just the 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 way the authorities have laid it out in an indictment, this wasn't just one FBI uh, officer, you know, who went on some kind of uh, uh, goose hunt and came up with something. There's a grand jury. They've been looking at this for years, considering evidence constructing evidence, following folks, and now they've laid them out. 
Ah, uh, so you you know, say where there's smoke, there there ought to be fire somehow. Again, not to be gleeful in anybody's misfortune, but mine is just to all of us, particularly young people who are coming to this country who are born here, of immigrants of our community from our country, do the honest thing. You know, get your education, find a career, do business, do something that you can be successful and live a peaceful, enjoyable life that you can spread around with those around you. Uh, you know, that's what I want to end with. I think if there's any lesson really is one to know that this system, you don't understand it, they'll catch you. You cannot hide from them. They're seeing everything. It, it, they just may let things go if you haven't violated the law and it's fine, okay? Uh, so it's a complex financial system. It's a complex political system. It's a complex economic system. If you do everything right, you pay your taxes, you're not in uh, IRS, Internal Revenue Service tax problem, no immigration trouble. You live a comfortable free life. Thank you so much. On that note, we want to uh, close down the broadcast. But remember, we don't close any broadcast without playing the song that says, we are all Liberians. Regardless of your political persuasion, your economic status, or whatever you are interested in, we are all Liberians. And it is incumbent upon all of us to do our very best to make our country the glorious land of liberty. Have a good night and God bless you. We all are the Yeah.